Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at the threat posed by Afghan immigration to Iran. In fact, I've taken a look at this topic many times in my previous videos. Hence, this video will just be revisiting previous uh, arguments made though with an update including new articles on the matter. I believe that this video, much like my previous ones, will allow Iranians to open up to the threat posed by Afghan immigration to Iran and the Iranian people and this existential threat must be defeated. But before this threat can be taken care of, Iranians need to realize that this is a foreign population which has very little to do with Iranians and are migrating in large numbers to Iran causing societal problems for the Iranian people. To begin this video, I'll be taking a look at the articles that have been recently released by Iran International in regards to the Afghan problem and towards the end, I'll be taking a look at the genetic differences between the Afghans and the Iranians of today including genetic differences between the Hazaras and the Iranian population. It should also be noted that the articles featured in this analysis are the most recent and most up to date. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin. The first of the articles here is titled, Government Moves Spark Concerns of Afghan Mass Naturalization in Iran. The first part of this article deals with the number of Afghans living in Iran, so it estimates that despite on September 27th, Minister Ahmed Wahidi stating that there are around 5 million Afghans in Iran, the new estimate is at around 8.4 million Afghans. This is rather unfortunate and shows that there is indeed a great degree of mass migration to Iran from Afghanistan mostly by the Hazara community. And unfortunately this has been the case since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. Moving on you can also see that in 2021 there were around 2 million Afghans living in Iran of which only 780,000 were uh, refugees and these were the ones who were not considered illegal so this means that this trend has been very recent. He further goes on to state that there are around 5,000 Afghans entering Iran every day which is rather unfortunate and the previous range was 7 to 800 so this means that there is a major migration of Afghans into the Iranian heartland and then the uh, article goes on to discuss claims made by individuals opposed to the regime that the regime is actually encouraging this and that the regime actually wants to naturalize the illegal Afghans living within Iran. Thus, this article does well to highlight the challenges posed to the Iranian people by these incoming Afghan migrants. Now, in response to this, the Iranian government has actually denied issuing citizenship IDs to Afghan refugees. Now, I believe that this probably is not the case and the regime is probably just lying here. But I hope that they're not lying and they're actually being serious that these are just ID cards and not actual birth certificates. In fact, once again, Mr. Wahidi denied that uh, the Afghans are being naturalized and that the Iranian government is actually opposed to granting them citizenship by giving them birth certificates. So this is very good and this means that the regime is acting against this invasion. Now, many of you may be wondering about the response to these Afghans by the Iranian people and actually, according to the same outlet, there is violence against Afghan refugees and this is actually causing serious concerns in Iran. So what this means is that many Iranians are taking matters into their own hands and protesting against these Afghan invaders. Overall, I think this is a very good thing and these Afghans need to be taught a lesson. Now what I am opposed to here is violence against the Afghan migrants and I think this is wrong and this is rather unfortunate that the Afghan teenagers were actually stabbed in Tehran by Iranians and this shows that there is indeed hostility between the Iranians and the Afghans and despite this nonetheless I ask for caution and restraint in dealing with the Afghan invaders. What this means is that the Iranians do not need to inflict violence amongst the Afghans but rather just protest against them and their presence within Iran. Now the article concludes by stating that these Afghans are actually being trafficked in Tehran to serve the purposes of the mafia that's responsible for this and criminal outlet. So not only are these Afghans being trafficked in Tehran but they're also contributing to the criminal activities within the country. Thus, for this reason, I support the total repatriation of the Afghan migrants living within Iran. 
Now, many of you may be thinking that this is not actually relevant to the Iranian situation as Afghans are fellow Iranics, but this is not true as my analysis here will show that the Hazaras and Pashtuns are very distinct genetically from modern day Iranians. The reason for this is that the Pashtuns and Hazaras have additional ancestry deriving from a South Asian as well as an East Asian source respectively. What you'll be able to see in the next phase of this video is that Iranians are largely genetically distinct from these invaders so they do not only pose a cultural and religious threat, they also pose a genetic threat to the Iranian people. For this reason, the Pashtuns and the Hazaras residing within Iran need to be deported and should not stay within the country for any longer as they will cause major problems to the genetics of the modern day Iranians. Thus, without further ado, I'd like to begin the next phase of this video. This phase will take a look at the genetic origins of the Iranians as well as the genetics of both the Pashtun and Hazara Afghans. To begin, here are the source populations that will be used to assess the ancestral heritage of modern Iranians. So you can see there's an Iron Age Aryan component made up of the Turkmenistan Iron Age sample from Central Asia. There's an Iran Chalcolithic component. There's a Kuraraxis Caucasian component. There's an Iron Age Hellenic component. There's a late antique Arab component, a medieval Turkic component, a Bronze Age South Asian component, a modern Caucasian component, and a Sub-Saharan African component. Here are the results for the modern day Iranians. So you can see they're on average 23.6% Iron Age Aryan, 52.1% Iran Calcolithic, 5.7% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 6.5% Iron Age Hellenic, 3.9% Late Antique Arab, 4.1% Medieval Turkic, 3.6% Bronze Age South Asian, 0.5% Modern Caucasian, and 0.1% Sub Saharan African. What's evident from these results is that modern Iranians are largely contiguous and have minimal foreign ancestry. As you can see, the majority of their ancestry comes from an Iran Chalcolithic and Iron Age Aryan as well as a Kura Araxid Caucasian source, and their foreign ancestry is very minimal and does not cumulatively exceed more than 15 to 20 percent. Overall, what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the Iranians of today are largely contiguous, which is quite interesting and remarkable. Moving on, the next population analyzed here are the Iranians from the eastern part of the plateau. With these Iranians, you can see they're on average 31.5% Iron Age Aryan, 42.6% Iran Chalcolithic, 6.0% Iron Age Hellenic, 2.2% Late Antique Arab, 5.3% Medieval Turkic, 12.0% Bronze Age South Asian, and 0.4% Sub-Saharan African. Again, what's evident from these results is that the Khorasanis from Iran are largely genetically an Iranian population and this actually dispels the myth that these populations are heavily admixed with Afghans whereas these results prove that this is not the case. Now many of you may be wondering about the Kurds and Azerbaijanis and some of you may be thinking that they're also genetically foreign to Iran but this is not the case and now I'll be taking a look at the genetics of the Kurds followed by the Azerbaijanis. Here you can see the results of the Kurds and they're on average 20.7% Iron Age Aryan, 41.3% Iran Calcolithic, 17.1% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 9.4% Iron Age Hellenic, 5.6% Late Antique Arab, 2.7% Medieval Turkic, 3.1% Bronze Age South Asian and 0.1% Modern Caucasian. Thus these results largely attest to the Iranic origins of the Kurds and proves that they're not genetically foreign to Iranians. Thus, the Kurds are also largely genetically Iranian. Up next, we have the Azerbaijanis, and you can see they're on average 11.4% Iron Age Aryan, 38.9% Iran Chalcolithic, 14.3% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 12.3% Iron Age Hellenic, 3.8% Late Antique Arab, 12.3% Medieval Turkic, 2.3% Bronze Age South Asian, 4.7% Modern Caucasian, and 0.0% Sub Saharan African. What's evident from these results is that genetically the other Iranians are also mostly Iranian though they have much more foreign ancestry compared to the other Iranians analyzed here they are nonetheless less foreign derived compared to the Afghan Pashtuns and Hazaras. Now here are the source populations for the Afghans that will be utilized here. So you can see that I added an Iran Neolithic component and removed the modern Caucasian component. And overall these are basically the same source populations though nonetheless I made a few changes to account for the differences between the Afghans and the Iranians. Especially the Hazaras. 
Now here are the results for the Afghan Pashtuns. So you can see they're on average 43.5% of Turkmenistan, Iron Age or early Iranic, 1.8% Iran, Calcolithic, 10.1% Iran, Neolithic, 7.0% Kuraraxi, Caucasian, 4.7% Iron Age Hellenic, 6.9% Medieval Turkic, 1.1% Medieval Mongol and 24.8% Bronze Age South Asian. Thus what you can see with these results is that on a genetic level the Pashtuns are very distinct from other Iranians as they have minimal Iran calcolithic ancestry as well as having more South Asian ancestry compared to the general Iranian population which is very interesting and they also have elevated amounts of medieval Turkic and medieval Mongol ancestry which again is very interesting and then despite having more Aryan ancestry they are nonetheless more genetically foreign compared to the other Iranian populations analyzed here. Thus what these results prove is that on a genetic level the Pashtuns are largely genetically foreign to Iran and Iranians largely due to their heavy Bronze Age South Asian ancestry which is very interesting. Now nonetheless despite this the Afghans are still mostly Iranian and the genetic element here is not the main qualms Iranians have with them but rather the tensions between the Pashtuns and the Iranians are largely due to the former the adoption of strict Sunni Islamism which is against the values of the Iranian people. Now the same cannot be said about the Hazaras and here are their results. So you can see they're on average 52.4% Medieval Mongol, 13.2% Medieval Turkic, 13.2% Bronze Age South Asian, 12.2% Turkmenistan, Iron Age, 7.4% Iran Calcolithic, 1.4% Iron Age Hellenic and 0.2% Late Antique Arab. Overall what you can see with these results is that genetically the Hazaras are very foreign to Iranians as they are mostly of Mongol and Turkic descent and not Iranic descent and actually they have more South Asian ancestry than early Iranian or Aryan ancestry for which reason they are not genetically Iranic. Now many may say that the Hazaras are culturally Iranic due to their Shiite faith but this is not true as firstly they follow a strict form of Shiism that is against the values of the majority of Iran's population today and also their language is not purely Persian and has significant Turco-Mongol influences. For these reasons the Hazaras are neither genetically nor culturally Iranic. Thus both the Pashtuns and Hazaras form major cultural and genetic threats to the general Iranian population. To conclude, overall this analysis took a look at the threats posed to modern Iranians by immigrants from Afghanistan, both Pashtun as well as Hazara. Overall what many of you saw is that genetically the Pashtuns and the Hazaras as well as culturally pose a major threat to the Iranian people and their presence within Iran is not only a security threat but also poses a major existential threat. Thus, if the trend continues, the migration of the Pashtuns and Hazaras to Iran will only further the replacement of the indigenous Iranians. That's essentially it for this analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.